different backgrounds. One association uh, is the GPA's Return to Play event. It's uh, been launched this week to mark the first season where all senior inter-county players are part of the One Player Association following that merger of the GPA and the WGPA back in December. And uh, to mark that launch, I'm delighted to say we're joined on the line by Cork's Darren O'Sullivan. Good morning, Darren. Hi, how are you? Flying it, thanks, and thanks a million for taking the call. You're on to talk to us, the GPA and WGPA marking the first season of all players being under the one umbrella. The merger, ha- uh, merger happened, obviously, back in December, and you said at the time that there were pros and cons uh, for it happening. What's the five monthly report? Pros only. I'm going back on my word. Pros only. Yeah, it's great to have the four codes. Um, as you said, under the one umbrella, um, from our point of view, I think it was always the, the grass was always greener on the other side, you know, what are the lads getting and um, what are we missing out on? Whereas now we'll have to stop our, our complaining. We're all being treated the same and um, the, the field, we have a level playing field uh, to go off. Um, so that's brilliant. Um, I think the standards are, have been set by the GPA and we're, we're happy to be a part of it now going forward. Mm. At a practical level, what, what does it mean? Is it a case that like, you know, you can pull the agreements that the GPA have and you can go back to the LGFA or, or, uh, or to the government and say, listen, we have, we have what's happening here. We want equity and that's the way it works. Or on a practical level, how is all that playing out? Yeah, I suppose you do have a bit of, um, a bit of pull there. Um, as you said, this is what's happening um, in the men's side of things. So this is what should be happening on, from our side. Um, Practically, I suppose it's helping our lives off the pitch. Um, you know, we're basically full-time athletes. We've full-time jobs. We've relationships. Um, so there's a lot going on outside of just sport. And um, I think the the GPA helps massively with that. I know a lot of girls have done online courses um, and webinars to do with, say, counselling, um, uh, addiction, um, there's everything in terms of job seeking. Um, so it's not just the on-field side of things. Um, we can now avail of all of that. Um, so I think it gives us life skills as well um, and helps us, I suppose, make our lives easier and manage our time better so that we can be the best athletes we can on the field. Um, so, yeah, as you said, I do think we have a bit of, a bit of um, kind of, rope we can pull a bit of rope i suppose mm. in terms of um what the lads are getting we can now um fight for as well yeah with the um like in terms of the wider uh, conversation with the minister for sport on a couple of weeks ago mm. um and he was talking about the government's commitment to women in sport it was a policy priority he said at the time um and it was a big part of that discussion that morning he uh, this week there was a dog committee to discuss what they were going to do post the 20 by 20 campaign um and the dispar- disparity in government grants, obviously for male and female GA players, was brought up at, at that committee. You've been mm-hmm. speaking about that for years. Um, there's been a lot of chat about it. Have you any sense that that uh, those things that you've just mentioned there in conjunction with, I mean, stuff like that committee or, or the 20 by 20 campaign, that those gaps are going to be addressed properly, like that, that the, the chat is going to stop and, and action is going to be, proper action is going to be taken? Yeah, that that's the thing. Like I suppose we've come so far in that now we're we're talking about it and um people are aware of it. So that was a huge step for us. But we are at that crossroads now that we actually need these the, this talking um to, to come into action. Um so yeah, we are hugely pushing for the government to to give us um I suppose that grant for and the main one is um travel expenses. Mm-hmm. Um I'm not underplaying how far we've come um, in terms of food after training, showers, all that. Um, we're ticking all those boxes, but the, the travel expenses is the, the gaping hole. Um, like, I don't mind, I'm living in the city centre. I've 20, 25 minutes to go to training. Um, we have girls coming down from Dublin, Galway, Limerick, um, on a Terry and Claire O'Shea sitting to their car down in Alley's, um in Beira. And it's two hours and 40 minutes for those girls to come to training. So not only are they leaving work early, um, they're putting petrol into the car and they, they, that, that costs money. Um, and you shouldn't be out of pocket, I suppose, for mm. representing your county at the highest level. Um, and look, it, it is frustrating because um, 
we, we haven't done anything about it. Um, the only thing we've probably done is increased awareness. Um, but we are hugely urging for the government to back it. Just do it. Um, <laughs> give us the grant, give us the money. Um, and we really will um, benefit hugely from it. And it's not even for us. I'm, I'm 26, I suppose. I'm nine years now playing inter-county football. Um, I might never get travel expenses, but it's for, for the girls coming up um, that we can make ladies football more attractive and that we can make it equal and get equality and be the same as the men representing um, at the highest level. Um, so I suppose it's just creating that culture um, and making it a better place for young girls coming up um, that, that they see what's ahead of them. There's a sense, Darren, sometimes that the coverage has got better, at least in the last couple of years. So you've been in, in the inter-county game for, for nine years. Has that actually manifested itself when it comes to equality, to the things that actually really matter on your day-to-day -day life as, a, as an inter-county player? Has the pace upped itself over the last couple of years uh, from, from your own experience? Yeah, definitely. Um, and that's the, the good side of it, I suppose. Um, even coverage you were speaking about there. So our first league game now is on in Porky Cueve um, on Friday the 21st. Um, it's being televised. So obviously a lot more people will see it, be talking about it. Um, and I'm, as I said, nine years on the panel and this will be my second time ever playing in Porky Cueve. So like that's kind of mad to think, but mm. it, it mm. is going um, in the right direction. The coverage and exposure um, ladies football is getting um, is huge. And um, just in, in, in regards of other things like um, food after training, nutritionist, team doctor, team physio, um, showers, uh, gear, like we, there, there was none of that when I started um, back in 2012. So um, we've come huge, huge way. And it is just about bridging that gap um, and not to be talking about it. Um, we really need to do something about the, I know I keep bringing it back to travel expenses, but that is the, the, yeah. the one at the moment um, that is staring think, us. Has anything improved on that front, Darren, since you, was it Finbar's two years ago you were chatting to us about it? Mm -hmm. Has yeah, anything improved no. on that front since? No, I think um, May, Mayo Ladies Football got a um, sponsorship that year for travel expenses. Um, but no, like last year now, we were traveling by ourselves to inter-county games. So we traveled to Parnell Park, to Crow Park, um, all around the country. You were in a car by yourself. I was lucky enough I could go with my sister, Kira, um, but other girls were in the car by themselves. And our county board, um, did um, cover some of that expense. Um, but in terms of the grand scheme of things, going to training three nights a week, no. There's been no uh, progress or improvement um, on that front, which I suppose is disappointing to see. Um, it's yeah. desperate, isn't it? Like they, looking at some of the quotes from Gemma Bagley from that meeting during the week, and she was talking about that actually the funding from the government per head because of so many more players playing the game now than from where it was even 15 years ago. Is uh, is down significantly? Like it's just incredible, and and it's really a case, Darren, is it that 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 funding needs to come from the government to support you? Yeah, um, our county board, our sponsors. It, 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 I don't think that's the way it's going to be resolved. Um, they're doing loads for us, but we do need government um, funding uh, to support this and bring it, ladies' football, to a new level. Um, mm. And as I said, make it more um, attractive for, for girls. Um, like if, if you think of it, it, it's kind of a basic really. Um, you know, if, if you're going anywhere, you need to put petrol into your car and not to mind mine, drive two hours, 40 minutes um, to play football. Um, and that's one way, like, so I, I do think that's the, the major one we need to close the gap on. Um, because as I said, we, we've, um, close the gap in so many other areas, but that's the the standout one. And one of the, the the stark things about it as well is that you're speaking from the standpoint of Cork, one of the most successful teams in recent years. Like, I'm not sure. Do you speak to players from other counties, maybe players that aren't dining at the top table of of, of the All Ireland Championship, but maybe even within their own county boards, they're not getting the support as well, which would just compound the lack of government support. That's it. Yeah. Um, 
like ourselves, Cork, we're lucky enough um, to be and have been successful over the last couple of years. So we're we're getting stuff that other county teams mm. aren't getting. Um, like I know um, I was talking to girls from Kerry. They hadn't got new, say, for example, new gear in, in three or four years, you know, um, they weren't getting hot meals after training. I, I think that has changed, but I know that we're on the top scale of things, which is kind of frightening mm. to think, um, to be honest. Um, like our nutritionist this year is uh, Johnny Holland, and he's seeing it from both sides. He's the nutritionist from the, on the Cork men's team, and he's now the nutritionist for the Cork ladies team. So it, it's interesting to see his perspective. Um, you know, we're getting stuff now like, protein and um vitamin d and stuff and he's just kind of surprised i suppose that we haven't been getting that all along um so it's interesting to see his perspective and to think that we're actually the lucky ones in terms of ladies football i think probably ourselves dublin mayo are lucky enough to to have the get the top tier stuff um but the likes of you know maybe a division four team um mightn't be as lucky as we are um so there's not only a gap between men and women there's a gap within our our own sport as well what, what was nutrition like before he came in then if there was there was no protein or no vitamin d because obviously that that seems like a rite of passage almost for every young lad who's 16 years of age at this stage almost yeah yeah you don't um bulk up or you don't get big now unless you've protein um <laughs> So yeah, look, nutrition wasn't bad. Um, we were getting hot meals after training. Um, we did have a nutritionist with us um, before. Um, so we'd have little workshops, um, little kind of seminars, I suppose, uh, PowerPoints put together about what to eat pre, post training, um, how to fuel your body um, and what worked best for, for you might not work well for other people. So it was kind of individual plans as well. Um, but I suppose we have just taken it up a bit of a notch this year um, and we've definitely put more money towards um, nutrition and getting those things that we wouldn't have had in, in previous years. Yeah, so it's, it's just really desperate, honestly, like that we've been having this conversation with you having this specific conversation, almost a repeat of it from two <laughs> years ago. And you just hope upon hope, like, I mean, it seems like a, uh, I don't know what sort of a hope it feels like, given that uh, people are people are using a lot of the right words uh, with great regularity, and you just really want to see the action, I suppose, at this stage. So we'll keep uh, watching, briefing it, and keep on asking the questions um, about it as well. Uh, the the uh, league obviously is back in a couple of weeks. Uh, you mentioned there yourself back in back in training. It's Tipperary in three weeks, and then uh, the Dubs the the week after. So how's it been uh, back in training and getting used to all that again? Yeah, it's been brilliant, to be honest. We went back last week. Um, I suppose the major thing was we, touch wood, had a successful week back in terms of injuries. Um, you'd just be scared that um, we'd be trying to play catch-up and that a spike in load might result in injuries. But we've been very fortunate now. Our management team were super, I suppose, aware of that and kind of eased us back into it. Um, we're playing an AVB now this weekend, so that's something to look forward to. Our first kind of match in 2021. Um, I don't know, will we, will we make it to half time? But um, it's good just to be back to see the girls um, and to have that social interaction is a huge part of football and a huge part of why I play. Um, I've made some unbelievable friends over the years and just to be back um, having the crack at training. Um, I think the first night we actually kind of got roared at and stuff just to, to shut up and stop talking like um mm. we we're all just delighted to see each other um and i suppose then we're we're hugely competitive people so getting that kind of aggression back into it and not having to kind of force yourself to throw on the boots you you now have a structure to your week your your training wednesday friday sunday and you prepare accordingly um so yeah it's it's, a, it's really exciting to be back and we're we're really lucky to be back have you been able to do anything at all over the last few months or has it just been a case of sort of keeping in contact in the WhatsApp groups or like, has there been a bit of i uh, I've just figured out a way that we can beat the dogs. Like, is there any, sort of, <laughs> have you been able to plan at all? Um, I suppose our management team have used the time really well. We've done a lot, as we've done as much as we can given the circumstances. Um, 
video analysis, um, one-on-one -on -one meetings, um, you know, psychology talks, um, nutrition talks. So we have done, but to be honest now, we're absolutely sick of Zoom. Um, and I also live with my strength and conditioning coach and I live with another girl on the, on the team. So um, I was lucky and unlucky, I suppose, in that way. I got away with nothing. <laughs> um, but she, it was good because like there was days there you you know, more wanted to put on the boots. So, um, you know, she was kind of watching our, our every move. So we, um, yeah, we went out um, to the farm out in Corraheen and we, we did our running out there and stuff. Um, but I was lucky to, to, to be in those circumstances. A lot of girls had to do it by themselves, which is, is lonely and it does get monotonous and boring enough. Um, mm -hmm. But other than football now, um, I wasn't up to much back to school um, six weeks now, I think. So that's uh, good. Get out of the house for a few hours every day. <laughs> Yeah, we can all suddenly empathise with those, even those among us that are not elite athletes. Sir, we can all empathise empathise with that uh, that spirit. The 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 dubs position, obviously, in the, the going for the five, does that help focus minds in a way at this this time of the year? Like, does that even come up as a discussion point, or yeah, how you how you? I mean, I, I, I you're not going into that detail yet in terms of how you're going to get past them, but does that help focus you at this stage? Um, it does look, um, Dublin are at the top and we're, we're chasing them. Um, I started off my football career with Cork and, and we were on the top and it was Dublin and Monaghan, Kerry who were chasing us. So it, it's kind of exciting to be at the other side of it in that, um, we're so close, um, and it's small margins that will get us over, over the line. Um, and I've no doubt we are going to get over the line. Um, we've a hugely talented team. We've an extremely hard working back our management team behind us. Um, we're all rowing and together and in the right direction. Um, but yeah, look, Dublin are the top team at the moment and it's up to us to close the gap and to, to catch them. They're, they're at the top, I suppose, of the mountain. If you want, we're climbing it. Um, last year we were very close. Um, we had a brilliant first half in Crow Park and kind of went back into ourselves a small bit in the second half um Dublin got louder and louder and built in confidence and we were disappointed I suppose with how we reacted with that um we got a small bit quiet and um nearly paid them too much respect in the second half we let them play um which was disappointing but I think we have learned an awful lot from that match um it was my first time ever watching back an All-Ireland final I've never done it before um sorry any all Ireland final we've lost I've never watched a back club or a county um which is extremely immature but I just hate it um but this year it was the first time we watched it back as a team and we did learn an awful lot from it um the saying you learn more from from loss than you do victory is is very true so hopefully we can implement that this year and improve just a couple of things there when you said they were getting louder and louder is that a literal thing as in like the the volume that they're shouting was getting louder yeah literal thing so we would always have um a big emphasis on voice pressure and it's true if you're going through and and someone's roaring at you or they're telling you that they're coming out and they have you they have you they have you like it is actually a form of of pressure on you so I just found in the first half we were extremely loud, whether things were going well or someone did well, you were roaring them on or you were roaring encouragement. And like we were our crowd that day. We didn't have, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, spectators in Crow Park. So we put a big emphasis on vocal pressure and trying to be as loud as we could because it, it does come hand in hand. If you're loud, you're vocal, you're actually playing yourself into the game um, and you're helping the girls around you as well. Um, we had a rule that you talked to the girl to your right, left, in front and behind. They were your four and you minded your area. Um, and I just found as soon as Dublin got that goal, we went very quiet um, and Dublin did literally get louder and louder. And I don't know, it just seemed like we got a small bit um, scared and, and sat back a small bit, um, which is disappointing. But I do think um, it's not an excuse, but we are a very young team. And I, I think um, a bit of experience there um, just to steady the ship would have, would have stood to us a lot that day. Um, but everyone has another year now under their belt. So hopefully we can learn from that. And then on the decision to watch the game back, 
I presume that was just management saying we have to do this. We have to take some sort of learnings. But like, are you on a Zoom call watching it together? Do you do it in your own time? And and what are the feelings? Um. It, yeah. No, we had to watch it back. Um. It wasn't an option. Um. <laughs> So if it was an option, to be honest, I wouldn't have watched it back. It just, it, like in, in terms of 2021, I know that, or 2020, there was a, a lot of negatives from the year, but that was right up there for me. Um, it was one of the, the worst days. It's not something you want to remember. So I wouldn't have watched it back if it was my choice. Um, but yeah, we were sent the video link. It was divided up then into different um, clips, like um, attacking, defense, tackling, missed tackles, um, wides, kickouts, or offensive kickouts and defensive kickouts. Um, so it's broken down like the detail it's gone into is incredible. And then you're looking at your stats from GPS. Um, and it's no surprise everyone's stats were down from the the Galway game. Uh, everyone's stats were were you know pretty impressive in the first half. And distance, acceleration, deceleration, power plays, everything was down in the second half. And it's just frustrating because uh, to to kind of let yourself down, I suppose, and on the biggest day of the calendar year in ladies football is is not what you set out for in January. So it's a tough pill to swallow. But you look, as I said, we did learn a lot from it, um, and how you remember stuff and how things actually played out are, are two different things. Like some girls might have thought come away and thought they had a great game and vice versa uh, like some girls thought they were shocking and it mightn't have panned out like that you know so um I do think it's important um and maybe I'm maturing a small bit in that <laughs> I can I can say I've watched back in all Ireland now <laughs> yeah well after nine years we all pick up something done you know that's the thing and uh, I'm plenty yeah. of years ahead listen uh, really brilliant catching up with you thanks million for joining us it's uh, all part of different backgrounds one association uh, with Darren, Paul Ganey from Kerry, uh, Dan Morrissey from Limerick and Sarah Derv from Galway, all part of the GPA's Return to Play event to mark the first season where all senior inter-county players are part of the One Player Association following that merger of the GPA and WGPA back in December. Uh, Darren, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much for having me.